Retopology! Ugh, retopology. The pain of retopology. I hear it all the time. Well, it isn't so bad, and I'm going to show you all how. Let's get into how to make retopology a real smooth ride. First of all, do you need any tools? In short, no. In long, retopo flow. It's good, but do you need it? I say no. Not need, but you may want it later. It's entirely possible to do retopology fast and painlessly with just the stock basic installer blender. Let's look at how and then come back to retopo flow later. Where to start? Well, it's appropriate to start by flattering some of the best retopology work ever done. And by flattering, I mean copying. Let's check out the retopology work done for the game Metro Exodus by Dmitry Osipenko, linked in the description. Looking these up and down, let's check a few things out. It's good to keep quads as square as possible on characters. Triangles are fine, but it's a good idea to keep them close to being half as square as possible. We want to keep topology flowing around joints that may bend. Areas that will go closer to the camera warrant more polygons. We want as close a match to the high poly meshes we can manage. Now, there are more considerations that can be made, but they will come naturally as you get more into the groove of retopology and research more. I will, however, show some when they come up later in the video. So, one more thing though. These are all considerations to be made for AAA game assets, based on reference of a AAA game asset, but do remember to find appropriate reference for the performance targets you're working with, be it mobile games or console or otherwise. So, Let's deploy some of these techniques on a high poly 3D scan I downloaded from Benjamin Bardu on Sketchfab. Again, the link is in the description. I'm going to show off the ways that I would personally retopologize this model to be on a AAA game asset kind of level, similar to Metro Exodus, as close as I can get, of course. I'm not quite AAA just yet. But I think I can impart some information that will be useful for you in how to get quicker at retopology and easier. I'm not going to use Retopo Flow for this example. I'm just going to use the default Blender plane tools and talk about it and screencast my keys while I do it. Now, I told one little fib to you at the beginning of this video. I said that I would make it totally easy. Now, you do need to do some work and you will need to practice this, but by hopefully knowing which direction to focus your work in on retopology for this video, it's gonna become a lot easier for your future projects. So, in Blender now, I have this model of Julius Caesar. Maybe, I don't know, I'm not a historian. Anyway, I am a retopologer though, so I'm gonna get in there. All I'm gonna do to start is just create a plane and then merge all the points at the center. I've got the snap set up to be the uh, individual elements onto faces because that's just the way I like it the most. You can set up your snapping however the hell you like. And all I'm going to do is look at where the contours are. Look at where we need details in this geometry to get a good bake later, you know, to be a good game asset. And I kind of see this jawline is a great place to start this retopology. Now, all I'm going to do is do a couple of minutes of this. I'm not going to do the entire model because within a couple of minutes, I'm sure I can get across a lot of the ideas. All I'm doing right now is just creating faces. I'm using the F2 add-on for a slightly quicker face creation. It lets you select a corner point and then create a face inverse to it and do that. You can fill out edges and stuff. You can install the F2 add-on just by taking a box in the Blender add-on settings. It's already uh, packaged with the program and I highly recommend the use of it. So I'm just following along, re apologizing, you know, and I just kind of have a feeling of how this should look. So when I encounter a situation, like this chin here, I just kind of know what needs to be done. In this case, you know, I'm going to create a little triangle like that, just an example of the way that it can be done. Join these three triangle points together, this loop can go around the top of the chin, and I can just kind of carry on following on. I'm actually doing this quite low poly at the moment, relatively speaking, compared to how much I could use for something like this, but there are a lot of guides on the internet that I strongly encourage you to look up if you're doing character retopology of how the loop should be around a face. And one thing about a face is, and you can see we've already built out that much, it's not going to take that long to do the whole character at this rate. you just got to get the pace going, and you got to stay motivated on it. And I can't tell you how to stay motivated, but I can certainly tell you that it's motivating to me that the longer I wait to finish the work, the longer I wait to do the retopology, oh, the longer it's going to take. I'm just sitting there kind of waiting for the uh, retopology to do itself, and it ain't going to happen. Maybe, maybe this video should be more of a pep talk, you know, everyone knows how to do retopology, just no one wants to do it, you should just get motivated. Um, what do I say to get people doing retopology, I don't know. I would guess I'd say, the more you do it, the easier it gets, you know, and I'm adding some loop cuts here just to smooth out this area. I'm just sort of running commentary, I, sorry, I didn't put screencast keys on. I always forget, okay, and it's so bad. You can guess what I'm doing, it's just control our loop cuts. This video, it had a scripted start. And now I'm just kind of riffing while I do this retopology, and that is way less polished, but, you know, you're you're in this deep already, you might as well see what I have to finish off with. And you see, just trying to keep my quads even, um, 
so that the squares are about square like all the time and the triangles are always about half a square is really what you want to do for good retopology, you know? And like this piece here as well, you can see because all the quads are kind of even 50-50 edges, I mean they're not, but they're close enough. The shading across it is really smooth without me having to go into the normals at all. And I can just keep doing this little thing and you know like I create like a five pull here. Use my F2 here and we can start to bring this kind of what's these muscles called? I don't know, I can't sculpt. But there's these muscles along here that we can follow with a line of topology and they'll look really good. Because it'll help us keep it close to the base. Now I didn't really clarify maybe enough about what root topology is for or why you would do it in this video, but in case you somehow made it this far into the video without knowing that, you're going to do retopology pretty much exclusively so that you have game assets that are more optimized than the high poly sculpts that you created. And then you can bake those high poly sculpts down into normal maps. And then you can have something that looks like a high poly sculpt, but in actuality, it's just a low poly mesh like this, which is really easy to run for the computer. So, in case you made it this far somehow, or you've been this video without knowing that, I'll knowledge by for you. I'm really just riffing at this point while I do this, because maybe that's my motivation for retopology. I just kind of go off talking about stuff, but at least some of what I'm saying probably has some value. And you can see I'm doing different steps in here. You can see on Google Images, it's very easy to find good like topo guides. Like if you need to get a lot more detail and you have four corners, you can just like grab it and then like insert like that, you know? Like there's no limit to what you can do with retopology, uh, despite what many may claim, but there's probably things that you can do better if you keep it like nice and quaddy, you don't put too many dodgy tries in there. Something I like to do here is a tip for you. See, we have a kind of funny looking neck shape here. And it's like kind of bending our polygon here. We have a flat polygon here, but you can see that's not flat. It's got like a, a dip across it. So we can preemptively decide that we want it to go from that point to that point. Because that kind of moves along the right shape of the character. Now that's really good for cloth, which I'll show later. I got another model I'm going to pull up and do some retopology work on and when you're retopologizing cloth honestly keeping that silhouette is so important for a good bake so you can almost hardly even put too much detail in so we'll get to that in a little bit but you know i can see it the same way on this skin by following the direction by triangulating the mesh early okay not gonna do too much more on this one but you can see it's a very simple thing to do retopology you just have to follow in. And I've done a couple of little dodgy pieces on this particular match. Like, I've just done that. That wasn't quite on my menu. That is a lot better. But, you know, how long has that taken me? Like, two minutes? And I'm not even going full speed because I'm recording a video for this channel. So, if you can just get the nose to the grindstone, you can finish this whole body probably in like 15, 20, 30 minutes, you know? It's so bad, is it? Anymore? Retopology, you've probably been doing it for hours. Let's be real, you've probably been doing retopology for hours. I did retopology for hours. But you know why I did retopology for hours? Because I didn't want to do retopology. So the more I want to do retopology, the sorry, the less I want to do retopology, the longer it's gonna take. All you gotta do is commit to it. This is a message to you, the exact person right now who is watching this video because they didn't want to do their retopology work. Anyway, let's move on to the second model and talk about doing clothes. This is the second one I want to go over, and this is one that I downloaded again from Sketchfab. It's some character from a manga I didn't particularly like, but the sculpt is really well done. And it's got some wonderful stuff going on with this cloth, and that is why I grabbed this one. So I'm going to do this cloth here on this like tank top. Uh, same way we started before, just drop a plane in and go at the center of it now. What I'm going to do at first is I'm going to do like a really kind of almost clean straight across quad topology on this piece here. Now you'll be very confused at first, won't you? You'll be so confused now, you won't be that confused. Because what I'm doing is actually quite straightforward. Uh, I don't know why I'm riffing like this today. I do not have the... these. It's this new idea, these weekly uploads on Fridays. They're going to be a bit shit sometimes. Oh, I said a naughty word. Um, didn't want to do that on these videos, but a lot. So, I'm really talking crap now. But what I'm trying to say is, I'm going to go straight across it with quads like this. And then I'm going to come back to it in a second. And you're going to see why. Because I'm going to then adapt it to follow this asymmetrical... Uh, cloth pattern we have here. So you see, I'm just going over like this, keeping everything super tight in quads, keeping it super nice. You know, this is good, but you know, you see, it's not showing any respect. These big folds and these big folds deserve to be respected. So let's just put one there and like one there. 
So what I'm going to do first of all is move some of the points around the top. And then, you remember earlier I mentioned this joining like that? I'm going to do that. Now that isn't going to always be enough. Sometimes it's going to have to use a bit of a knife. See, I put a knife in this spot here. And that might not have been the best move ever, but let's move this piece back here. Join like that. You know, we can take this one out, have it move along this edge here. And, you know, this is where you can get kind of free form and stuff, and you can start bringing in, like, tries. And I think it's because, you know, this particular piece here, this, like, chest piece, is not, you know, on an overly deforming area, right? And even if it was, it doesn't mean it's impossible. It just means you're going to have to be a little delicate about your weight painting. So, you see, I'm just cutting across with a knife here, just so this matches the shape. And you can actually see the lines are now apparent in this low poly mesh I'm creating. And that will do absolute wonders for two things. It will do amazing stuff for your silhouettes of your root topology, and it will do so much for your root topology's bake. Because the bake will be so much more like what it actually is, you know? You're not going to be trying to bake these big folds onto these flat surfaces, which is something that I think a lot of people do try and do, and something I certainly try to do at times too. But after inspecting these Metro Exus models, which are really some of the best in the business, you know, I learned that doing this kind of thing, this topology really isn't even too bad. There's just a couple of triangles that can easily be handled. And it improves the quality enormously. Even just such a sort of thing like that. You know, this model isn't the best for it. Because it doesn't have huge seams and huge folds or anything. But just this fold here is enough to demonstrate conceptually that, you know, carrying on with these shapes is an exercise worth doing. Like, it's just, you know, I'm repeating myself at this point really. But it is seriously worth getting the knife tool out and just following along. So that was what I really wanted to show on this particular piece, you know, and you can do your clothing as well. I actually recommend splitting up clothing. That's what I always do for parody models when I'm doing retopology. I split the clothing up to second part. I'm not gonna, <clears throat> I'm not gonna split this one off on YouTube because I haven't checked underneath. There could be all kinds of things dropped in under there. And I do not want to get this video taken down. It's already a little bit of a risque model. It was just the only free one I could find that really proved my point. But yeah, not too much more to say about that. Retopology, it's all in the feeling, and you just need to get in there and do it. Keep your quads equal, look for good reference, copy the reference. If you have a character like this, look for characters someone on art stations or retopologize, you can look up wireframes or whatever, just copy them. You know, it's not a crime, it's just, it's not like tracing, it's polygons, you know? There is one, okay, well, this isn't necessarily one correct way to do your retopology, but it's not like anyone's gonna get mad if you do the same kind of topology as them, right? I don't know if someone probably would, but. Pay no, pay no heed to them, pay no heed to them. Because all you want to do is just copy good topology and just keep practicing. And I know I said this video was like a magic cure-all, but in a way it is, because I am giving you the best solution to read topology that I'm aware of. It's just that it might be a little bit of a hard pill to swallow. Anyway, I'm going to cut this video off here. Good luck. I will see you all next Friday for a new video. If that's something you want to watch, maybe I'll never see you again. But if it is, please do subscribe, stick around, like the video if you want more people to see me rambling madly about topology. And, you know, maybe if I ever do really correct this topology stuff, I'll make a better video where I actually tell you good techniques of how to do it. But until then, hopefully this was helpful, and I'll see you.